This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. Welcome to the Off the Break Podcast, your podcast dedicated to current movie theater news, operations, and insights from the people that book the movies. I'm Ken, and with me today, Cody and Kyle. Hello again. Hey, everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, it's a new year. year. (laughs) Is this our first one back? Yes, because it's the first week of Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, just, year. It's, it's January 7. A week has seven days. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. This year... It... It's flown by. <laughs> no, just so much has happened. I don't know where I am or what day it is sometimes. It's, it's only week one. That can't be a good I sign. just feel like I'm clawing my way to a vacation this weekend, and that's all I can think about. <laughs> you are, know it's a we good are, start we are here. I thought it was the second week in January. That's here. how much stuff has happened. <laughs> we are here on Earth. You're only slightly behind Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk for personal net wealth. Oh, so just, just slightly behind? Yeah, just slightly behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry about the exact number. It's just yeah. slight. It's I mean, just, it's, a round, it's, behind, it's a rounding guys. error. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what better way to start the new year with release changes? Yeah. <laughs> We're starting off right, The everyone. more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah. <laughs> So That's the, big, the motto here. The big news that we're going to talk about and really dive into this week is Morbius moving from January 28th, the end of January, to April 1st. This is like April. the only only release date changes we have. It's But it's the only significant one. No, but, I mean, but it was Monday. Right. They announced it on Monday. They did. And it... I mean, nothing else moved. Yeah, it could have gone yeah. wood. Nothing, no, else, it nothing else changed. This should have been... If this was 2020 or 2021, this would have been the the first rock in the rock slide. Right. The the, the brick that moved that caused the dam to break. Mm-hmm. Like that would have been the thing. The domino and, effect. And people aren't scared anymore. No. Bring no. it on, says Disney Universal. Warner Bros. Yeah. yeah. Paramount. Too. STX. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. No, I think a, a couple of things. Um, I th- I think Sony will say that they want to keep the Spider-Man momentum going. And I just feel like they're a little novice at having such a big picture at Christmas. Disney's been around this a few times and they know it dies off in January. Everything dies off. I mean, Spider-Man's going to keep going because there's nothing else, but it's not going to be big. Like you're n- you weren't sacrificing Spider-Man by having Morbius. In fact, I think you're doing yourself a little disservice because there's so much positive momentum now with spider-man that i think that momentum would have gone right into morbius there was some interest you're i'm afraid that they're putting too much time in between this and that they're gonna have to really jumpstart now a marketing campaign around morbius when it when the marketing dollars were spent already now like it, yeah. it you just keep the momentum going and on look that. what doctor i mean disney does every year they have a release every four weeks and they alternate them from disney to marvel to Disney, to yeah. Marvel. So there's eight weeks roughly between every Marvel film. Right. We have that this year between Doctor Strange and Thor. Yeah. I mean, they, they're they the ones you look to when you're like, how do I do this? I have right. a Marvel <laughs> property and, and I need to release. Oh, you have seven weeks between Spider-Man and Morbius. And Spider-Man, because of an act of God, meaning the fact that uh, Kingsman, Singh, and... HBO Max's Matrix, Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't fulfill the need to hit the number one. Spider-Man is going to be number one for at least seven weeks. Right. I mean, the week when 2-4, when Moonfall and Jackass for life forever, I for see reasons getting knocked unseen. Off. <laughs> knocked off there. Yeah, but they're going to be 15, maybe $20 million openers. Right. It, and it's just going to be because Spider-Man has fallen below that mark. Yeah. Sp- it has nothing to do with those other films. Spider-Man's great. Everybody saw it. And so they're just not going to keep seeing it three and four and five the times. The last week of January, it's going to be a $12 million, 10, 8, 7, $6 million yeah. weekend. Very quiet. So if you open anything that weekend, you would have been from one of the major studios, a success story. you will be week two. You will be number two or less. Yeah. That's just how it's going to happen. That's just the <laughs> law of diminishing returns oh, yeah. in our industry. Yeah. Meanwhile, in April, I'm trying to look here. They're it's, kind of in a crowded oh, position, unless if things don't go a, it's as April well for the others. But places yeah. are going to choose films over Morbius. But April is so crowded. There's so much product in April. We're we're going to get starting, I think, in March into the more crowded crowded time. Yeah. I mean, and, the beginning of March is the Batman, and even a Pixar movie is falling right behind that. So oh, that's yeah, going to no, last if a few weeks. If you're a single screen location, you are choosing between opening opening Batman. Or the new Pixar movie, Turning Red. And both 
neither one of them is a wrong choice. No. Yeah. They're both going to open about the same. I, If you are single screen, I tend to go with turning red because you want families because they'll buy more concessions. Concessions. And there's Correct. some, you know, there's some hubbub that the Batman, the Batman, what a pretentious freaking title. <laughs> it's going to be, it could be rated R. Yeah. And that's going to turn people away too. You can't open a rated R movie mm. over, over a PG no disney movie no. joker says otherwise but i get what you mean there wasn't though. a pg right. there wasn't a pg one floating around the joker that was it that's fair enough i get what you're saying <laughs> that though. was it i do <laughs> you weren't choosing to that or pixar yeah <laughs> and it yeah. was october it wasn't spring well, break Mar- yeah right. i was gonna say <laughs> right march has spring breaks across the country and so that's why you tend to want to go with the again the pg title the families because they need help that week and they're mm-hmm. going to bring kids and buy lots of concessions well even in april um, April 8th is going to have Ambulance and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and then after that is Fantastic Beast which we're not totally high on but that no. still is going to be something that could significant yeah yeah, yeah. I mean there's there's a runway for it in... and then there's Bad Guys which is another animated um, film for families yeah, and there's just I mean, yeah. there's, there's room for I w- it I would say Morbius isn't really for families like no, no, it no. really is for an it's older teenagers teen, you know, teenagers young adults and probably more male so and not necessarily for like general MCU fans you know what I mean like the right. general audiences who are like what movie should I see oh there's an MCU movie I'm familiar right. with those no I'm there's hoping... gonna be a lot of black and dog collars and studded <laughs> studded high heels going into this movie I'm it doesn't it look plays... as goofy as Venom either yeah. no. I hope it plays like Venom but I just yeah. the pro- Morbius isn't as well known as Venom it was never introduced to general audiences like Venom was, at least in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. So right. there was some knowledge of Venom. And it, so I can see why Venom surprised people and got really big. I don't think we're going to see that with Morbius, but I think it'll play to the same audience. Right. And if it's any good, if if any of the diehard fans like it and it fulfills all of what they were hoping for in the film, word of mouth will grow that movie but, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but Tom Hardy at when... Venom came out was a much bigger name than Jared Leto is now. Yeah, because he was, or m- maybe more respected. <laughs> no, he's just a newer name. Jared Leto is a generation older than Tom Hardy is. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, he he's was, surprisingly he was older. Famous, he was famous in the nineties. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom, Tom Hardy did Inception and was Bane, and then you and, know, and, and then, he did, and, and he then, wasn't in Suicide Squad, and then was like Jared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't even think of him like that. I'm trying to right, like right, right. Dallas that's Buyers the, Club. That's I think only of one I House think of, of him. Gucci. I'm like he was the good I don't Joker. Cross. <laughs> oh. We're gonna move past that. <laughs> yeah. Keep going, Ked. <laughs> but I mean, he's he doesn't have the same, you know, uh, name recognition. I right. mean, his Q score cannot be anywhere near what Tom Hardy's was when Venom came out. That's true. I, yeah, I would. I, I would that. bet if you look at it, it's probably not even half because he's he's old. He's not. Yeah. He's old for Hollywood. He's old for being a, a leading he man. Look in a, in I a mean, Marvel despite movie. the ripped abs and yeah. no, him trying features. to act young. Yeah. Okay, well, how old is he? I have Kyle. I let's have see no how idea. old he is. All right, because, I'll look it up. Because I'm not you, disagreeing. You're with looking you, at Tom, I just... Tom Holland is what 14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's 21 now. Honky Tonk Pumpkin Patch is 35, 40, 40. I would, I would, 40. I think Chris Hemsworth, 40. All right. Thir- late 30s guess it's, for Chris Hemsworth. Guess is on Leto's age. Um, I'm going to say 46. But he's 52 years old. Ken was closest. He's 50. Yeah. He, Jared Leto is 50 years yeah, of old. Of course yeah. he is, Cody. He was famous Wait, in Cash. the 90s. Yeah. He's, wow. He, well, so that is true. Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire were famous in the 90s, too. Okay. They're get, 50 also. They what were get, your guesses on Hardy? Old, Tom old? Hardy? I bet he's 42. Uh, I'm going to say for 40. Ken was closer. He's 44. 44. He's 44. Those and, are some good guesses. And Venom came out three years ago? Yeah. Yeah. 2018? So yeah, three or four. years. Yeah, so he was five, four, 41. He years. was hitting his stride as like a an old, uh, like a mid, middle-aged leading man actor. Yeah. Right, right. He's not 50 years old, for crying wow. out loud. Jared Leto is old. Let's give him some wow. credit then. Yeah. This All right. Is, this Ken, is not going to work. Can definitely prove the point. The one thing I do want to talk about, though, is the fact that they said it at 4-1. What are the odds that Sony is going to leave this movie to open on April 1st, 2022? That's a good point. They, I mean... Is what, this like the lawn con set up for an April Fool's Day joke? <laughs> They're going to move it like I 10 would more think, times well, and I then would, end up back on that date? I'd laugh at it. <laughs> not with them, but yeah, I'd no. laugh. What, what are the odds? The odds are zero. 
zero yeah. percent this film is going to open out on april 1st that's a good point this entire conversation could possibly not no, matter because it'll co- go to yeah, somewhere even complete, more crowded it's going to move to summer it's going to move to fall it's going to oh. move back to spring yeah they it might. is not going to open at this current i mean it might open on april 1st what's but the it over will under change, on it but it will change are we are we gonna take a bet on this it is gonna oh no you still haven't paid off our initial bet so i'm not betting oh. with you <laughs> The audience didn't need to know that. Oh, they could just they, know that I cashed in. Even I didn't know that. <laughs> they are a unique. We need to air our dirty laundry. A Ken. unique member of our off the break podcast family. They need to know that you're a welcher. <laughs> so I, Sad. I think the one glimmer of light for this movie staying on this release date is because they've moved it now maybe seven times, and that's not including the pandemic. So. <laughs> I have to think at some point they're like, we have to release this thing. Otherwise, there's never going to be any Is momentum for it. Is nine their, their most? Or was it? Peter Rabbit was 11, 11? if I remember right. Okay, so we get a Some, dozen yeah. moves, and then they, they got to cut themselves off. So we have three more moves, Kyle. I'm just hoping they don't pull a Peter Rabbit, and they actually realize that five. they have to release this eventually. Because it will the hype will die down. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it, it happens. Well, that's why I'm concerned about them moving to April, because I feel like the hype is going to die by I, then. I think if it moves one more time, the hype is going to be right. decreasing. If it moves, that's if it it moves back into 2022, it's done. Right. Because right. January to April, it's not too bad. People can wait a bit longer, no, I think. I mean, we're building but... schedules from March 4th, when the Batman opens, <laughs> until the first weekend of August. There's no room. I mean, no. if you if you take off, if you move from the April 1st, there's no other weekend where you don't have a title that's better than Morbius opening. Yeah. No, <laughs> no and, he's right. And, you know, they could say that it was Omicron variant as well, but I just don't see Omicron causing shutdowns or anything. Now, didn't she win like the first season of Apprentice or something? <laughs> Probably. Okay. I think that was her name. Um, but but she did a tell-all book. We so I don't think she's in any good graces, just like this Omicron va- variant. Anyways, moving on. Good job Om- getting back to yeah. that. Omicron. <laughs> Isn't that the capital it, of Saskatchewan? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a dozen of these, so keep going. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're throwing me off. <laughs> let's, let's put it this I, I way. I want to make a point about Omicron. Omicron, oh my God. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Spider-Man. I've got, I got more. Keep me coming. <laughs> Spider-Man made $1.16 billion so far. Right. Like, I just have to believe that the majority of people just have stopped caring. Well, like I, I think they stopped ca- caring, Kyle, and I think the variant is not affecting people as much. Yeah, it's very highly transmissible. Yeah, it is overwhelming hospitals, but people aren't getting as sick and they're not dying because the vaccines are it, working. Probably. Yeah, and I feel like it, it's moved now from that pandemic, like that really scary time, into more of like a flu-like season. Sure, but yeah. we're still so close to the pandemic that um, it's people, touchy. It's touchy, yeah. and people are taking time off. And I think that the only issue facing theaters isn't that the state is going to shut them down because cases are so high. Mm -hmm. I think we're well beyond that policy now, but I really think that they are going to have an issue with labor. And so it's probably a good thing that they moved more BS because in the next few weeks with uh, having come out of the holidays, I know that a lot of theaters are struggling with finding employees that are healthy they're either have had the virus or they're in virus protocol having been near somebody with a virus and they were the theaters were understaffed going into spider-man and all and so what few employees they did have were definitely burned out after spider-man so right. you've got that what few you have are burned out they're either in protocol or have had the virus and so that's a big struggle is just finding the help i mean across lots of industries but really in the in the movie theater because running a theater is so labor intensive you can't automate a lot of those features so it really does take a village of people to run a theater successfully yeah i agree i think you nailed it oh and also distribution we're having some issues getting concession stuff and and not even like the candies just like lids for Mm -hmm. for the sodas and a lot of the distribution warehouses are empty because of supply chain issues. So you couple that with the labor, it's just a mess. And yeah. so we're going to see a lot of theaters cutting back hours. We've talked now. about the equipment, getting the equipment service before. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're you're running full steam now. You're going from some locations that were running one show a day 
on their screen. Now you have Spider-Man, so you'd like to show three times a day. Mm -hmm. And that equipment is not ready for that heavy of a load. (laughs) Well, it wasn't. And some equipment broke. And now you're like, okay, I've made some Spider-Man money. I want to get this fixed. And you can't find anybody or parts to fix it. It's just the struggle in this year will be from the supply chain issues to the labor issues for theaters. I really think that... You know, our biggest worry before this was the windowing issue and the product issue. But I really think that that's kind of coming around and fixing itself. I think, you know, we'll talk about this in a little bit about streaming numbers. But I I think that studios are realizing now that they need the theaters to legitimize, which we've always said on this podcast for the last few years. You need the theater experience to legitimize the movie, to make somebody click on it on the streaming platform that the the by being in theaters, it increased the value of those films. And I think the studios are finally realizing that now. Yeah. And in the process, they'll make a lot of money and that'll help them make product for streaming, and which is fine. And we only have mm-hmm. one one film right now for 2022 out of the big six that's going day and date with the streaming service right now, right? Yeah. Just marry me from Universal. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, this time last year, we had an entire slate of WB films. Yeah. Everything. So we only have one out of, you know, 50 announced films for this year, which is awesome. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, they're, they're finally realizing knock that. Knock on wood. Yeah. But I think we're yes. over the ex- pandemic experimentation. And now the studios will keep wanting to say, oh, we need flexibility. We need flexibility with this releases. But I think they're realizing that people on streaming services don't want 90 minutes of content. They want a 10-hour experience they mm-hmm. want a series that they can actually binge yeah, yeah. you can't binge a movie no i think <laughs> you're like oh that's that was, movies... that was great to experience but i'm done with it now i want <laughs> more content well mm-hmm. that's where you have spin-off series and things like that mm-hmm. like the that netflix was doing with the marvel stuff right that had the small tie-ins and that disney plus is doing yeah you go there for the 10 hour long 10 episode series right but you come to the theater for the big where all the little series come together and you have the big storyline is in the theater yeah i i do worry that that might be lost due to production on tv shows how Mm -hmm. prestige they almost look now and how similar in comparison they look to some movies i do worry that that's going to blur the line to where audiences feel like well if i can have this great production at home why would an eye for the oh, movies. But. I definitely think it means that you have to step up your game. You cannot yeah. on the theatrical side, you know, do a cheap film and get away with making, you know, doing a run in theaters and thinking that that's going to be enough. Like it, the quality still has to be very good. Yeah, totally you agree. Can, you, otherwise they're just, people are going to look at it and say, this belongs on streaming that it belongs where low quality films go. Yeah. We're going to see how this worked with Lionsgate and Moonfall. Yeah. Moonfall itself is a, the on the surface, is a theater movie. Mm-hmm. You have the moon crashing into the earth. You Special have Halle Berry, you have spaceships. Galore. You have, that's, this is made for, to be seen in movie theaters. But if they didn't spend the money to make it quality, yeah, it's going to look bad on a 60 foot screen. Yeah. Not, not okay. It's going to look bad. <laughs> and it's going to tell a lot. I mean, they're going to draw all sorts of conclusions again from this. Oh, oh it didn't work because, you know. We didn't have a window. Well, just we cus- didn't do this, but customers are more discerning now. Now they're they're very aware of the cost of going to theaters, and they want to make sure that their experience matches that cost. Yep. And that's on that's partly on the theater for having nice seats, for having good concessions, for having you know a clean auditorium that's on the theater to make sure that that operations experience is perfect but it's also now on the studio to make sure the level and quality of the product deserves that experience for people to shell out that money otherwise they'll just stay home and watch it for free because it doesn't and they may not even watch it at all they're gonna get with so much product they're gonna get super discerning super picky about what they spend their time and their dollars on now yeah so what are your booking strategies for this uh, desert <laughs> so of now, a month we so call now that I, So now that I was like, oh, we can get through three weeks and then we'll have Morbius. <laughs> to, I don't have that. Well, four weeks until we have Moonfall and Jackass. Yeah. So and Forget it. Oh, Moonfall. <laughs> I mean, my theaters, I am going to play Jackass, but a lot of them cannot advertise it because of the name. So they're not... 
So that's got its own issues right there. But so. that's for your theater specifically. It's yeah. not a not a nation, but nationwide thing. But there's right, a right, lot right. of cinemas that are family friendly that, you know, they don't want to post on their social media jackass stuff. I mean, I mean we th- cross this bridge I, with, I mean, yeah, we do with this all the time. There's right. been, it happens once a year where there's a film that has, what do we have? Uh, there, during the pandemic, there were a couple that had crazy names. or Right. And you're like, oh. <laughs> I, nothing I can do with this. So right. what am I going to do in the meantime? Well, I'm not going to get out of Spider-Man or seeing anytime soon. I'm not dropping those. I mean, I will drop them when literally I've run every single dollar out of those that I can because there's just nothing Same that's going to be great. Same thing with Kingsman and well, Matrix and The problem American is I've Underdog. already had to drop Kingsman and Matrix because they really didn't perform at all. I yeah. mean, I can't hold something doing $150 for the weekend because the next weekend's going to do less than $100. And I, I would be better off bringing something else in. I'd be better off bringing some, back something like Ghostbusters or be Venom. better off closing the screen. Or even just closing <laughs> the screen. And it, that might happen. You know, this might be a good time in the next couple of weeks to really pare back show times, bookings, and have the theater and the staff recover from the craziness of the holidays. And I think that's kind of the direction we're taking in a lot of the locations. We're just pairing stuff back and taking a breather before we move forward. Might be some, might be a good time to do renovations, I guess. You might catch need ups, to do maintenance, catch yeah. ups, maintenance and catching up. Yeah, I mean, not even like the big stuff, maybe little things. I mean, Spider-Man oh. probably <laughs> yeah, we put had a few whole... dents and bruises into your theater, I bet. <laughs> we had the so... whole pandemic for the major renos. But yeah, I agree. I'm like, just saying, like, it's a chance. There's right. gonna if be you're not going to be too. torn Cleaning. seats, there's going to be carpet tiles that need mm-hmm. replaced. There's... You, you finally made the best business possible. Right. Every every I don't know time screen three comes on and it says filter maintenance required. Now's the time to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you have, you should have the funds from from having had Spider Man and right. stuff that that now you can catch up on some of that and just get the theater back in order for the next few months. And it, and I think that that's kind of what we want to do until March or April. And then I think you gear back up well, full capacity. Mar- first again. weekend of March, we're it's on. Yeah. So the if Batman. you have so if you have inspections, you know, certifications that are due mm-hmm. come March, April, get them scheduled early. Yeah. Set give, them your, down. give your staff some time it, off. January what? is always a dumping ground for bad movies, but if F after Spider Man they're clearing it out again, moving forward, January is not gonna be a place where movies are gonna light the world on fire. No, and with the diminishing prestige of Oscars and awards and stuff, that used to kind of carry January. And now we we just don't see that anymore. And so January is becoming kind of hollowed out. But if we're going to have really big Christmases, that I think that's okay. I think it's okay to take that breather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that apparently October is the second biggest month of the year for movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All of a sudden October is now as good as it gets. Who would have thought? October and December. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, if that's all it is for booking strategies for now, mm-hmm. do we want to move on to the next topic? Oh, yeah. So TikTok strikes again. It's TikTok. The, the talks. TikToks and the kiddos with their those, phones. Those kids, they caught theaters being bad. Bad theaters. Yeah, so, I know. I thought TikTok was just for watching girls dance around in leggings, but apparently not. Huh? <laughs> no, I think it's moved on now. Oh, it has. Oh, it's there's a, little... a wide, wide world of endless possibilities on TikTok. It's gotten a little yeah. classier. Sure. So, <laughs> so there was a a viral video going around of a of a theater somewhere that was using an Amazon Prime account to start and play the Grinch movie. Um. This is an issue on a number of reasons. I'm sure the theater is thinking, why would I pay Universal, whatever it is, to get a hard drive or a Blu-ray disc of Grinch when I can just stream it for free and no one has to know? Well, people know. People take phones in. They've copied the screen. You're in trouble now, theater. And it's wrong. You have to license the product. Anything that you play in your theater has to have a license on it. Otherwise you're going to get copyright infringement and a cease and desist from anywhere. That includes NFL football games, college games, like sports, fighting, all of that. They, there is somebody somewhere that can license you that product. So there's no excuse ever to use this unless you've gotten prior 
you know, consent from the studio, like they messed up your DCP delivery and they're like, okay, this is okay because you're paid for this, for this screening. So let's assume that the theater paid for the screening and they just happen to have an issue and they're going to stream it. If that's the case and you're going to stream something off uh, Prime or any other kind of streaming service, you never, ever project that on the screen. You unplug it, do the, yeah. the logins, and then, and then plug it back in. Plug it back in. <laughs> that was always the rule with DVDs. Like you could never start the DVD and have the FBI warning. The DVD or the menu, DVD menu could never show up on the screen. Right. You had to start the DVD where the movie started and that was it. It had to look like it was a regular movie. All this does is exposes... It pulls back the veil of yeah. a theatrical experience. Yeah, and it... And it ruins the value of the experience. Like, why would somebody have gone to the theater and paid, you know, $5 to get in and then just see an Amazon Prime account when they could have done that at home too? Like, they wanted an experience and they wanted something more and you you ruined that for them. So it was just super lazy, super just yucky operations and we would strongly strongly recommend never ever do this yeah for sure never do it it's embarrassing and, and on face value if you look at the post of course there's comments like poking fun at it and finding you know the humor in the situation but there's a trickle down effect when it comes to that like yes they're laughing at the situation but at the same breath they're probably thinking afterwards but for real why would i go when you know, I can find entertainment on my phone or when I can clearly see that a theater is using streaming, which I could have done to begin with. Yeah. why? It's would dangerous. I, it is so dangerous. It is just so sloppy and sloppy operations will kill a theater. Yes. I mean, it really will kill a theater. So I just never do it. <laughs> so embarrassed and infuriated when I saw that video. Like that's just not how you operate. Mm -hmm. And it's not to me, it's not funny at all. I just. I don't know. No, I people inside the industry, that. it was, you know, showing how the... <laughs> yeah, but the, we don't... Most theaters funny, don't Ken. do <laughs> streaming. That's like a, a use of last resort. Mm -hmm. No, correct. You're just, right, right, you're, right. You're showing how the burgers are made. Right. I mean, this is what McDonald's doesn't want you to see, how the chicken nuggets are made. Nobody <laughs> wants to see this. They want the experience. They don't want... I mean, everybody, you know, if you think about it, if you really think about it, that's... We know this is an illusion that the theaters put on and put something on screen sometimes. But, you know, this is every, everybody's bought into this. It's yeah. <laughs> in the social contract. If you're going I to think, see Elf or Polar Express, right. you know, this isn't the initial release of the film yeah. 20 years later. So there is the illusion to it. But that's what it is. Everybody right. buys into this. And yeah. now it's becoming more exposed because of lazy theater operators or bad managers or bad employees. Just bad operation processes, bad practices. And I know it's hard. I know it's really hard getting people to work, especially in this day and age. Like trying to get good employees is super difficult, but there cannot be an excuse for this sloppiness. But if but if during your free time you're listening to a podcast about theater operations and upcoming movies, we know you're good operators. Oh, yeah. We know <laughs> we know you're the best of the you best. You guys are great. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about you guys. Yeah, you want you want to you want it, some insight and you want to better your operation just by wanting to tune and into the podcast. Obviously, you're movie nerds. <laughs> if you're if you're listening to this. <laughs> Like I've got, I've got forty five minutes free. I'm gonna listen right. to. But if you can be an idiot. But if you bad apples in our industry affects everybody. Of course. Especially when something viral is seen by the next generation of moviegoers, we want to keep that quality of experience up. And luckily, it was kind of a funny thing, but it just in the back of everybody's mind, they're like, ugh, they're just not the value isn't there for the eight or nine or ten dollar ticket prices that they were spending to get into that. Exactly. But that's okay because they do. I'm not saying that you should never do it. People do want to rent the theater. They want to play their own DVD. They they want that. They know that there's that opportunity to do that. So we're not saying like you have to hide what the theater's capabilities are. You just have to much better manage that. So if you are out there and see it, it's just so sad. So so silly. Yeah. Um. Not great for that theater, not great for the industry either. No. Again, it's a trickle down effect. We're better than that. And all the off the break podcast listeners are better than that. Their theaters are great. Oh yeah, they're awesome. 
You know who's not better than that? Nielsen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nielsen's struggling. Yeah. They're um, on the struggle bus to there. fail town. To fail town, <laughs> yeah. Basically, over the week, uh, Nielsen, who um, is known to be keeping track of, like, streaming numbers and television ratings and things like that. They keep that sort of data and occasionally like they help with like studios and whatnot showing love, like what types of numbers um, a certain movie or uh, show or whatever would have done. But they kind of came out and admitted that it's hard even for them to tell like what's success and what isn't. And we've kind of been on this for a while to begin with, but to hear even someone or um, some sort of entity like Nielsen is to be saying that too. It's kind of, I guess, troublesome, but at least we know that everyone's on the same page, I guess. Like, how do you track streaming? What does it mean to have a successful stream? Like, this is so new. This streaming industry is so new that we don't have the language even to describe what is success, what is failure, what is all that. We... We came off a movie theatrical industry that had over a hundred years of time to grow language, to develop. We know what a box office is. We know what ticket sales are. We can tell success from that. We have transparent reporting and we don't have any of that with streaming and, and streaming, I think because there's not a metric like box office numbers were ticket sales. That was a ticket sold, a butt in a seat. They were concrete numbers that you could look to to say this was a success. A lot of people went. This was a failure. A lot of people didn't go. Well, what does that mean for streaming? I mean, I know that Netflix would like to say if you watch two minutes of a film, that's a success. But is that is that the success? It would be kind of the same as somebody buying a ticket and walking out of the theater. That's still considered a ticket sale and technically a success. They only saw the trailer and then they left. Yeah. It's the equivalent of seeing two minutes of a movie on streaming and then leaving. Right. It still counts. And then now they're (laughs) trying to do like billions of viewing minutes, but (laughs) that doesn't tell me anything either. That's not like original viewing minutes and there's no... Nothing to qualify that on a dollar amount. Like we kind of yeah. measure success in our industry by the dollars generated from it. Well, I'm just I'm just gonna change our industry from yeah. now on. We're just going by minutes viewed of a film. Minutes so viewed. So Spider Man, six hundred million dollars so far, I think domestically. Ten dollar ticket, that's sixty million people. Spider Man's one hundred fifty minutes. So. Nine billion minutes of viewing for Spider Man. Hey, that's success. 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 I think right. anything over a billion. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> Sing to a billion minutes of viewing. Excellent. Great Excellent. job. I mean, with streamers, they're relying more on how many more subscribers they get versus how many minutes something right. is viewed. But st- so I guess, well, I don't know. I guess maybe track it based off of that. But at that point, too, it's it still doesn't feel as good or as right. it does. Like, it to me... When you talk about number of subscribers, it doesn't feel concrete and it doesn't feel very successful. It feels like a shrug because right. at this point, streaming is television. So it's like, yeah, obviously people are watching stuff. Yeah, like audience <laughs> on ratings your streaming service. and things feel like the metric for streaming, mm-hmm. but they're putting so much into it, like subscriber base. And why do I care how many subscribers somebody has and it's like a subscriber maintenance there's a whole bunch of numbers that describe subscriber and stuff so it just it just seems so ripe for goosing your numbers to fit your narrative and then you don't have any transparency and none of these streamers are putting out real numbers I mean, no, probably Netflix not. is putting out their like top 10 views, but I don't trust. I have no trust that that's actually what's happening because I don't know if my top 10 that I'm seeing, is it the actual top 10 or top 10 of my algorithm that, hey, this is what everybody else is viewing that kind of likes the stuff you like to view. Like there's just no trust in me that's a good that point. what I'm seeing on that screen is the actual what's being viewed. And I can't even imagine trying to be a producer wanting to create content and being like okay what are audiences into like there's no how do you green light anything how do you tell what is going to be successful and then as theaters what do you how do you tell if you're losing out on content or something's worth playing or it's just it's just crazy i guess with all the ambiguity about streaming and the numbers is that studios 
may enjoy that more because they don't have to necessarily worry about what is concrete a success or a failure right. unlike things that go to theaters but i feel like they're still just defrauding even the shareholders like how do the no, they, shareholders yeah. know if if what these studios have sunk millions hundreds of millions of dollars into are actually being a success like if we had sunk that hundreds of millions of dollars into production on movies you would have known the return on that and that might honestly be what's helping keep um them from continuing um right. putting movies on theaters yeah, I mean, because they, they don't want to be that transparent to the shareholders. Otherwise, they'll be in trouble. Right. I mean, they have to be transparent to the shareholders. At some point, it's all got to kind of come out in a report. But I just feel like it could be masked so easily with numbers. Oh, like, they've yeah. just taken this film company counting to the next level. Like where yeah. Harry Potter 4 like lost $30 million. Yeah. <laughs> like the film companies did when they had back-end deals with actors or producers. Now they've taken it beyond like, we're going to go to minutes on this. Yeah. <laughs> instead, of, instead of dollars generated, we're just going to go to minutes. And we're going to go to an get arbitrary a, number. a big enough number with that minutes, I can see them being like, there's so many blah, blah, blah seconds of viewing. Yeah. No, or, it's just... And then, you, and then you add a dollar somehow, equivalent dollar to like this... Does, this made like 50 cents for every one second of viewing you, you figure yeah. it out then it's like oh that looks so great but no we are so lucky in our industry that we actually have a yardstick for yeah. things yeah i mean we can say i mean up to until spider-man it was zero to a hundred right how well has this movie done well, on a scale of opening and then spider-man made it a two and a half yard stick right <laughs> <laughs> well that's because our our industry there was so much bamboozling in the beginning and and laws had to step in and transparency had to be created and because people were hurt by the bamboozling and now they're just bamboozling with data and i don't know if if the people are realizing what the actual consequences of all this is yet and it, but i guarantee you that if if people start losing money and start getting hurt on this then there, then you'll see a lot more regulation on it and a lot more transparency from the industry. We're just so early in it that it doesn't feel like we're early in it because of everything being fast tracked so much lately when it comes right. to streaming. But it it really is still early on into this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how old is Disney Plus? Just a couple years now. Two maybe. Yeah. I mean, HBO Max. Peacock still hasn't officially started yet, according to their subscriber base. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> Them and Paramount Plus are like, oh, we're starting now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who started the race? <laughs> yeah. So it's just, and you think like, you got to think back into the movies in the 30s, like all the crazy stuff going on with the studios and the making the money and the the fraud that was happening. And I'm like, I, mean, I bet that's happening in streaming right now. A lot of, yeah, there's not, there. <laughs> aren't a lot of laws that go to the federal government that are yeah. called decrees. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you, you build something called the, the criminal and, uh, as paramount and then the yeah. word decrees. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't see, you don't see the Fannie Mae decrees after the housing crisis. No. <laughs> that never happened. We must never let this happen again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, these are just temporary laws to get things fixed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that didn't happen in 2008. No. <laughs> and it might not happen with, with streaming now, but I just feel like we're in that time. And we the just Hulu don't... ultimatum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're already going nuts, guys. This yeah. is the first week of the new year. Wow. I know, but it's a new year. It's a new year. Yeah. January is going to be a little slow, but this... I feel like it's a new year, new challenges, but like good challenges, you know, having labor and supply chain issues, I feel is a better challenge than having a worldwide pandemic and, you know, state regulated and, closures. Just a so little. This is and nice. no movies and no information yeah. and guessing and, what's going to happen. And trying to uh, apply for some government grant that you think will save your business. Just, this is so nice, guys. And we I'm thought so there was going to yeah. be like this big lull in in production but because we took basically a year off yeah. um there's not jurassic world which is slated for june was a post pandemic production mm -hmm. yep. so we're right in stride i mean summer those six months where we don't have a weekend without a big release i mean we're running right. <laughs> it's not a it's not a tw nothing's ever going to be 2019 no. but we're looking at you know 
two thousands mid. I think we've got. I think we've got movies. a great year this year. I think next year is going to be a great year, and then who knows after that? This who, is a franchise building year. Yeah. I mean, Jurassic World is done. Yes, I mean, usually I would think they go in threes, done, done. so they've got to find something to build off of this one. Right. You've got Top Gun Maverick, which Tom Cruise is going to live forever. Apparently, <laughs> so he's trying to. Kill I don't himself, doubt it. But so they're going to. So they're going to keep. <laughs> I mean, assume if this works, they're going to build something off of this. We've got Super Pets. We've got. Oh, I'm excited for. I super mean, pets. speaking of Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible, oh, yeah. all the. I mean, that's, superhero movies you can imagine. But we're, this is a, Yeah, bizarre. this is a franchise building year. I mean, Could I wouldn't be. be surprised if they turned this. Uh, young Gru and Minions into another trilogy. Oh, where it's a, love, a kid, a naughty, I'm so a naughty kid. I'm so excited for Young Gru. Yeah, it's so gonna, it's gonna be so good. No, I'm. This year's gonna feels like a really good year. Just looking over the movies, I have a lot of optimism heading into this year. No, I mean we knew 2020 was gonna be a down year because there were no franchises. There was nothing left. No, and we were <laughs> having. Se- remember sequelitis guys remember sure where were the biggest issue or like oh they're making so many sequels and every one of these opens to 150 million and it's just <laughs> less and less each time <laughs> oh my gosh I know, boy were no. we dumb it just feels so bring it on no, it just gonna, feels so trivial gonna, all of this it feels so hardened yeah, now we're gonna rebound and you think you have problems i have real problems <laughs> get some get some sequelitis again i'll take that I over take sequelitis, <laughs> sequelitis? what's that sounds great yeah. <laughs> or wherever this omicron is <laughs> yeah <laughs> I got I caught sequelitis. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> Which variant is that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll let you get into your your weekend. We just have three five five this week, so we're not expecting a lot of big things, but some new blood in the theater, which is yeah. great. No, yeah. I'm excited that it's something new that they stuck with their release schedule. I just I have a fear that it's just not going to do great. We're, not just because we're in January and everybody spent their money at Christmas, but female assassin films like just haven't done great so i don't have a lot of expectations for it but i hope it does well yeah I hope it does something <laughs> i need something to get us through january spider-man huh? and, and this one has to do a little bit of business so i could play it in a couple weeks and <laughs> when those spider-mans are so dead right right <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you for listening to this episode of Off the Break Podcast. You can find us on all podcast platforms and over at silverscreeninsider.com. Um, and starting off the new year, there's going to be a lot of new movies. So if you want the updated and accurate information for all of those releases, plus marketing assets from the studios uh, to help you with your social media promotions, you can find us at silverscreeninsider.com. Yep. Happy New Year, everybody. Big Bye, grosses. everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.